Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for October 2nd through the 8th, 2023. So as we begin, I'd like to thank everyone who's returning to this weekly series and to also welcome anyone who might be new to our Angelic Wisdom community. As you can see, um, we're still having a lot of cloudy days and um, rainy days. It's not raining right now, but the clouds are pretty um, heavy and it's about 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes after eight o'clock in the morning. And so hopefully, um, I've tried to adjust the brightness on the video um, as we're recording in hopes that there will be plenty of light <laughs> um, for you to be able to see the cards and the table. So just a few reminders. Um, first of all, make sure you, you sub uh, subscribe, uh, select the all notification bell, like, dislike, and leave your comments um, about your experiences that as you were watching the video. Also, if you'd like to get an angel reading with me, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services, and you can select the first time promotional offer if you're a first time client. Um, there are half hour um, appointments as well as email. And there's also a um, 10 session arrangement uh, that's discounted. So um, if you're feeling like that you would like to work on something um, and you like guidance and following that through, and most likely um, if you've worked with me, um, you'll know if that's the right thing for you. Um, but anyway, these things are available for you. Also, if you'd like to um, have just contribute to the channel, um, and making a, a donation of any amount, um, that would be greatly appreciated. And you can go to um, the link for my PayPal me link, which you can find also in the description area below. So all of these links will be below the video that I'm mentioning. I just published yesterday the um, monthly angel reading for October, 2023. So that'll be the one of the first links that you see um, in the description area so that you can go to that video. Um, I'm also working, we'll start working on the monthly um, angel scopes for the 12 zodiac signs um, starting on Monday. I'll work on them and hopefully get them out um, sometime by the end of the week. Um, so I'm just kind of catching up on everything as well. Um, you should also see the daily card messages. Um, I know it's been since the last one was August 15th. So um, I appreciate your patience um, and through everything that's been happening, especially with my brother. Um, I'm still in involved in that. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to find some family members in the area that can be of support. But my brother now is out of rehab, inpatient rehab, and is now um, um, with living with someone who can be there for him um, to, you know, and have the right facilities that would accommodate his needs at this time. So like a ramp and all these kinds of things. He's um, still, you know, he has a wheelchair. Um, he uses a four-pronged cane, um, but he needs support in order to stand or walk. So um, these are sort of the things that are just happening right now um, in a, you know my life and in, in our family's life. And, uh, you know, still trying to manage all of this and um you know how this all will work out um in the end also 
um, I the job interview is over. Um, I did not get the job. Um, won't talk about it here, um, but it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'll maybe I, I I mentioned in the monthly video that I might have like um, a chat soon, a live chat. Um, because there's so much going on right now, and um, it's it's a very interesting time in the ways that we're we're being sort of led to changes, and um, everything has a purpose, and um, and I think it's a time of self discovery and personal. Um, growth in terms of your own awareness and, and the ascension process. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath together. And just tune into your heart space. And relax and let go. They're just showing me this is going to be a week. They're showing me sort of like a, a, a waterfall, but it's a little bit um, sort of like a, a more about releasing this waterfall. At the top, I saw a cross, a small cross. And so there's going to be some um, sensations that are coming up. Um, that will be about emotional releasing and letting go of um, some trauma, letting go of um, negativity. Now, this is something, and I sort of see almost like a, an object um, sticking out of the water, uh, this this river that's flowing and cascading over the side. It's it, the incline is it's not like a, a a drop, but it's more of an incline. Um so it's hard to I don't know what to qualify that is. It's like a waterfall, but it's not quite right, because it's just it's not a drop like off the edge of a cliff, the river just but it's it's a incline. And it feels like that that object, like it's like a bar or something, is sort of almost like something is interfering um, with the flow and um, so you have to be aware in the writing word yes of how of letting obstacles because that's really what it is it's an obstacle um, sort of get in the way of the process of healing and I'm getting a sense that that is focus that it could be things that we focus upon that are sort of it's sort of like you're using it to to it's a crutch or it's something that you're holding on to this obstacle because that distracts you from being present with your own healing process and sometimes that means just to feel feel the pain to feel what's happening to be present with things that are not pleasant so that you can really, I don't know the word wants to come into my mouth, observe. Sometimes it's about observation that helps us to get the most clarity. And if we allow ourselves to get distracted by, let's say, our devices, right? Or um, playing this role where, you know, you feel like you're the hero in so many people's lives. So everything depends on you um, and you're needed. And all of that helps you to sort of avoid seeing what's really there, what's going on with you and what's creating what's going on with you and why you don't want to take, why you don't want to be there with yourself in that moment of whatever that experience is about. 
Now, this doesn't mean that, and I don't know why I'm saying the word lunch. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have no idea. But it may be that, you know, you don't, you don't take care of yourself. Like you don't make time to nourish your body, such as with a meal like lunch. Maybe during the day, um, you just get, you bring a lunch or you have lunch time, but something doesn't allow you because of some belief you have or the way that you keep putting your attention or making yourself available that you don't have time for something as simple as this. And ignoring time set aside for your body to have to be restored to it's, it's sort of like driving a car on a long road trip and not stopping for gas when you need it and then ended up running out of gas and getting stuck that feels like what happens to you um sort of metaphorically um and so you know if you if you're feeling like you you keep bypassing sort of the help or the signs for you to take a moment and then you run out of energy at, at the when you need it the most because you didn't take the time when the signals were sort of going off for you to pay attention so this is something i feel that um these are the types of obstacles that sometimes may not be the most obvious ones, but it seems like it's an obstacle of self-care. Uh, the obstacle is that you neglect to, you know, self-care. You neglect to do those things that help your energy um, to be consistent and to be in support of whatever it is that you need. So sleep is another thing, right? Or um, relaxation time or time for hobbies, you know, um, just time to for gratitude. And gratitude is so important because if you're not, um, having things to be grateful for to, during the day and you not don't have the time to be aware of that, then you are completely missing out on everything that you're doing. You're not really absorbing because what we put into life, it gives back to us. Life is always giving back to us, but when we don't notice we don't get the fuel back from life that we deserve. There is a relationship. You know, giving and receiving is a relationship. It means that you are present in any relationship dynamic that life is offering you or the journey of your life is offering you. So if at every instant, really, you should feel appreciation or you should actively engage uh, mentally or express in some way gratitude because that acknowledges the relationship that what you're giving is also what you're given is being given back to you. Everything is a reflection. Everything is um, cyclical. The passion that you're giving to a project, that project is giving back energy of rewards and opportunities and possibilities, ideas, solutions, revenue you know the, the 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 
how do you say, the tentacles of receiving and giving are multifaceted. There is a variety of ways in which we give and at the same time, a variety of ways that we are receiving. There is never a waiting. There is never delay in this relationship. There is mist. Not opportunities. That's, that's like a later sort of, that's a side effect of missed, um, where you've missed the opportunity to recognize. That creates delays in your experience. So that if you're not, if you're giving, but you're not receiving, through your appreciation or gratitude, then it will take longer for you to feel as though you are being compensated. Or it feels like success is down the road or it happens much later. And I forgot, I, don't, I feel like I said something else when I, when I talked about the relationship. I feel like I called it another name. But anyway, the point is, close that gap by being more present. You're not present. You're not in the present time if you are not aware of this immediate and instant relationship this connection of giving and receiving. The way to help you to be sort of present with it is to, to feel appreciation or to be actively um, in gratitude. You'll notice a shift in your energy. This is the way to just sort of boost your frequency, to elevate it, to keep, so that you never really feel like you're running out of energy. You can work as hard as you want, but the effort will reward you if you are aware of the appreciation that you're experiencing in this relationship dynamic, or if you're actively expressing gratitude. You know, even to say, God, I love this. I love, I love what I do. This is fantastic. You know, all of these things, the interjections, you know, um, will keep you in this present awareness. Okay, so let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with. And it's Archangel Butayil. And the card says, be interdependent. Expand your horizons. And I think that this interdependence is right in the heart of this relationship dynamic that we're sort of becoming aware of. This, that everything, that everything that you're experiencing, now let's not get into good or bad, but just everything is about some kind of relationship. And everything, whether it's challenging or apparently, you know, supportive, if it facilitates an ease, no matter what, or if it's conflicting, no matter what, it's feedback to whatever you're putting out there. And I don't want you to receive it so that you get all crazy about trying to do the right thing in order to avoid the bad stuff. 
because the that's a three-dimensional mindset or framing or interpretation of this beautiful relationship that exists in our experiences. The fifth dimensional mindset sees everything as a lesson offering wisdom. So the things that challenge us the most, the pain, our suffering, the only reason that we experience the pain and suffering is because we're holding on. We're delaying the wisdom. We're not open to the wisdom that is coming through the conflict, the challenge. We're not being present with what it's happening. We're not appreciating that we're go we're having we're experiencing growing pains. We don't appreciate what we have called wrong or bad, right? We don't appreciate that you're you're shifting, you're growing through an experience. We can we can learn, we can wire ourselves to appreciate what's really happening, even if it's God awful. Because you can look back, and that's what the past is most useful for. If you're gonna look back at the past, do it out of appreciation and gratitude. As I've said, I, the things I've been through I would never want a pass. Even if somebody attached billions of dollars, I would say, nope, I appreciate the journey I've had so far because of all the wisdom I've gained and who I am and and the, the amount, the expansion of my offerings to, to support others Without that journey, this would not be. That this is more, this is priceless. This is more valuable than anything I could have ever achieved. And there are plenty of things that I could have achieved that you feel regretful about. But everything happens for a reason. And we are who we are. That we will never diminish. We will always be who we truly are meant to be. And we will always be striving for it, no matter how wrong things seemingly are going. We're going always where we need to be in order to discover who we truly are. And that is the power of all of the lessons that we're going through. It is also, as I've said in the monthly general reading, something that we need to understand, that we are also here as light workers. That means that whatever you're going through, you are doing light work. You are elevating the frequency of Whatever that is that you're going through, whatever that topic or subject is about, there are many others on that same bandwidth of experience. And your light and their light is elevating it. So think about it this way, the ascension process. The planet is going through an ascension. And all the souls that are here are going through their ascension. We came here to alleviate the karma, not only of ourselves, but the planet. So our work, our our purpose is light work. That's the call that Gaia 
gave to us, our mission. So any disease or any painful relationship experiences, you are shifting like a light worker. You are elevating or transmuting the frequency of that experience, not just for yourself, but for all who are currently on that bandwidth and all who have been. And this is the sort of the culminating um, work, light work, of all the beings on the planet right now. This is how we're all actively participating in the fulfillment of our planetary ascension. So there is a true interdependence. And right now, you have to realize the way to be interdependent is to realize that whatever you're going through, you're going through it for many. And to not be present means that the lesson, the healing, is be installed. Right now, we're all fighting with each other through our parties, political parties and whatever associations that we have. We're defending our these things. And all that's doing, there's a purpose for that, of course. There's light work in that. However, if we're not really being present with what it's, the wisdom that it's bringing about in us, the, the, the clarity, the new insights, the new opportunities, the new possibilities, the, the compassion, the work of rebuilding, the work of respect, the work of tolerance. These are powerful light works. It's a powerful relationship. And the only way for the relationships to heal is for the relationship of appreciation and gratitude no matter what you're going through, the removal of judgment about what is success, about what is failure, about what is this, or that, bad, good, wrong, right, moral, immoral, all of that. And just get into that fifth dimensional mindset. I love this diversity. That's gratitude, appreciation. I respect all of this diversity. I can't get enough of it. It's exciting what's unfolding. It's exciting to see. It's exciting for me to see and know that what I see unfolding before me is not a disaster. But it's a, a real orientation of all the components. It's a freedom of those components to come and find new ways of coming together and creating new elements of harmony, happiness, and joy. My life isn't going wrong. My life is finding new ways to move forward, for me to find a happiness beyond the comfort zone or the familiar, the familiar that I've found security in. I am ready. I'm ready to let go of the securities that I've known because I've outgrown them. So my life 
seems like it's cracking up, right? The egg is breaking. And now you're free to spread your wings. You're free in that you're being reborn. The rules are now different on this plane, this higher plane. I can root myself in unconditional love. And as I break through that egg of my own, matrix, I bring everyone else with me. Because when my light is liberated, I am more powerful to exterminate the lower frequencies of experience and bring others to new levels of experience and possibilities. We are in this together. And that's where we're at right now. It brings us to that expanding the horizons. That's what we're doing. We're breaking through the shell. We've been in, we've been forming the planet, mankind over thousands, hundreds of thousands of centuries have been in a birth process a rebirth process. And now it's like the shell is broken and it looks like chaos because no one is really present with their purpose in all of this. They're just scrambling in fear for the loss of the past and not about the possibilities in the present moment. So the five of earth, it says that this is a time right now that you're worried, especially about things, material things and money and that this is sort of motivating all of your decisions. You can't get away from it. You're, you're scared. And this seems scarier than ever before. It's like in your head, you know you're better off than you ever were before. You know that there's so much to appreciate about so much that you've learned in the last few years have been so many, an acceleration of our lessons and the wisdom that has come with it has given you a stronger sense of, of self, but you keep coming back to the physical stuff. And I can't think of the, the Latin, I can keep hearing it in my head, but I can't get it out of my, my mouth. Sort of, um, mode of operation is something like motives. I don't know. Anyway, the, the old mode of operation in the old paradigm of fear, this is where we were always, this is our weak spot. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I got to get enough. I got to get enough. There's no support. There's no support. This is this energy of worry. This is the prayer of the ego. That's what worry is. It's your ego praying. And boy, when your ego prays, it is a rocky road, right? You're going to have to learn to surrender. You're going to have to learn to surrender to that old mode of operating. You cannot make the connection to your ascension path through this. And I know you're saying, but we gotta live, I gotta eat, I gotta, I do too. So do I. And 
I am not swimming in, in, in any kind of bucks <laughs> for sure. However, I think what I just learned is it's got to be connected truly, even if it's something you really want to do. This gets in the way of even the things that are right for us. And you cannot allow this to be your mode of operation. As a little fruit fly just went by, I don't know why, because there's no fruit in my room, but it, I consider this little pest the distraction. This just keeps, it just flew right across the table above. It keeps distracting us. This thing. It brings us back to earth, but in a harsh and horrible, hard way. Because every dream we have, every desire to flow with our hearts, to express and to go and experience, clips our wings when we come back to this. So this is the issue. Then we got to stop living by it. And that's why when I was talking about soul economy, to really get into what your soul economy is, that is talking about what your physical body needs, but no more and no less. And what the soul needs, no more, no less. You would find your budget and your I gotta, I gotta have would be more harmonious and peaceful because you would say, boy, I just want a lot of things. Those things are distractions to me. That's an ob obstacle. You know, capitalism and how it functions and survives is by constantly going at you, trying to convince you, salesmanship, that you need this when you don't need it. All those commercials, all those ads now that we can't get away from, as soon as you go look somewhere, just a peek, now it just keeps following you all over your phone. Somebody created that manipulation. That's energy. Every time it shows up or every time you think you need these things, that's energy. That energy, when you say, oh, I need that, and then you say to yourself, I can't afford that, or I can't do it, and you worry, or you become, uh, what's the other thing, the experience, that, that, that um, well, I can't think of the word, it's not frustrated, but you become, it's not anxious, it's you, you, it's the FOMO thing, really, it's like you become, it's a compulsive I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. You can't think about anything else. You, know, you see it everywhere. You... That's capitalism. That's not your soul's economy. So we gotta detach from this because it's holding us back because it's not allowing us to be present in the ways that our souls need us to be observant in the relationships that we're offering, the things, the passions are, the you know, what we're offering out of love, this is where we need that relationship attention to be so that you receive, whether, whether through appreciation or gratitude, what's coming back to you when you, through the choices that are coming out of the heart. And so the queen of air here, she's, to me, straight to the point, clear cut. Like, that's got to go, <laughs> right? So you got to do some, when this thing comes up, you got to, you know, cut that stuff loose. Do I need this? No. Really? No. No. And it's not about telling yourself no because you're denying something. It's about being honest. It's about being clear. What is the what is the goal of your heart right now? What is it that your soul, where does it thrive? That's soul economy. What is it that my soul is passionate about? What is it that I'm resonating with very deeply and profoundly? I don't know why I saw the word azure, but it made, it made me think, Sorry, I walked away from the book. It made me think of this crystal azurite, 
into the very deep blue. And I don't have time to to, to sort of read, but I know Azurite is a powerful healing stone. It brings up, um, it brings, let me see, Azure should be A-Z. <laughs> We're already not even, I don't have time to do this, but um, it cleanses and stimulates, da da da, let's see, um, it, it, it really, um, well here it says, I see this, Azurite challenges your view of reality and lets go of programmed belief systems to move into the unknown without fear, reaching deeper insights and a new reality. Old beliefs gently rise into the conscious mind to be tested against truth. So I, if I were you, I would work with this Azurite since they showed it to me. And I like this one because it's funny shape, but it kind of looks like a heart shape if you look at it. Um, sometimes. But anyway, so yeah, because you really need to get to the truth. You really need to um, deprogram yourself. And and this will do it in a gentle way, but it will bring up what really needs to be, um, what needs to be, what needs to come up and what you need to look at in the moment and to let it go. You know, this is, I always think of this card as representing my mom because she was that kind of person, <laughs> like she threw, she could just go, she didn't have attachments to things. She would just go through, uh, you know, I, I like, I'm, I keep things, right? My mother's like throw, she throws it out. Uh, I'm like, oh, but I, you know, that was for my time. You know, I have a shirt from the last hug I had with my grandmother. I haven't thrown the shirt out, you know, 1989, um, because it was the last time I saw her. It was the last hug I had from her. And so I never, I'm never getting rid of the shirt. My mother would have thrown the shirt out. And this is where we are right now. There's a lot of stuff that we need to throw out. There's a We just need to cut, sever ties with these obstacles because that's what they are. And they're holding back our independent, our interdependent relationship of light works that we're collectively doing for one another. Here we have the dreamer card, the fool. So this is indicating that there's an opportunity for new beginnings, for you to step sort of, I love this card because he looks like he's stepping through a vortex or a portal. And that and portals for me um, just help us to sort of step into a whole new awareness. But we do this as it might suggest, the fool that we let go. We take as little as, as possible that it, with us because we want to really be as open-armed and open-eyed and open heart, having plenty of space and room for what's to come, for that which is the unknown, right? So where you really need to be is letting go letting go of that of that what is no longer paying attention to your soul economy clearing <laughs> clearing those things that we don't need those umpteen number of subscriptions that you have that you can really do without you know um it's better I know we don't have CDs, but it's better to have a CD where you know you're going to listen to it. And you can always replay it. You don't have to worry about it being lost. I mean, you don't. We don't need all these things that this new world that's changed so much since I was a kid. We we don't get. We pay for every little thing now, and we don't need all those things. We don't even need most of the technology that's out, but we just believe we do. And then they are forever changing. And, you know, then you got to buy another one. 
spending money that you didn't don't need to spend. We're all, you know, doing it, however, but it's just something to think about. All right. Doing the things for your body as well. Like soul economy is also about like exercise, diet, whatever the body needs, that's the those are the things that you should be your priority. You know you're gonna need clothes because for the seasons, warmth, that is not. But do you need XYZ? Do you need this, this, and that? Especially if you feel stuck in your life because of a lifestyle you're living, but you feel like you can't change because it costs too much. Well, streamline your lifestyle. Not because you're stripping yourself of things that you want, but because you are willing to sacrifice for the for the very thing that you do want, that you know is going to bring you the kind of happiness that you deserve. So the Hermit card is a card I pulled from the bottom of the deck. And this is just indicating here that we need some time to ourselves. And I, I think cutting the strings to too many things. Now, you can't hermit. In our, in, in our society today, like the way we would really like to. And um, I don't recommend it as a, a practice, physical practice, you know, isolation. What I, I think we're talking about here is taking back your power. Taking back your power from capitalism, right? Taking back your power from neediness, whether it's whatever type of relationship it is, needy energy. I need, I need money. I need this. I need this. You're always saying that makes you needy. I don't have a, I don't, I don't, I'm not in a relationship. It makes you needy because if you tune into your soul economy, your soul has a no belief or concept of this. You are not alone because it knows it's not alone. And I know in our human experience, this is hard, but we have trained ourselves to think that we're needy. So it's going to take time for you to untrain yourself that you're not. And the relationship, the way to heal this is through appreciation and gratitude, being present and appreciative and, and being thankful as you are experiencing things. Everything in your house, somebody did it. Thank you, thank you. It's it's someone did something for you to own that. Thank you. You're as I'm doing this, I'm always feeling the appreciation because I immediately experience the wisdom of something I did not think about before or had not said to myself before, and it happens all the time. That is being present in this work. You are doing it when you're working, but you just forget to feel the feelings or to thank, give thanks for what is happening. And it's not just about thanking the stuff that's good. It's about being thankful for the things that are going wrong because you just learned something. It challenged you. It, it, you. You gained experience, skill, wisdom, and knowledge. You know what not to do. So be thankful. But eliminating that which does not really resonate with you, that which does not serve you, that does not bring pleasure, let things go that need to be let go of. Untangle yourself from material neediness. All right, so I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful, beautiful week. God bless.